Diagnosing your performance issues with your apps that are already in production may not be the greatest thing in the world, but have no fear because Azure has got you covered with the Azure Application Insights tool. So learn more on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I am joined by Principal Software Engineering Manager, Chuck Weininger, who is a member of the DevDiv Azure Services team. Welcome, Chuck. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Leslie, thank you. Thanks for coming. So today we're gonna to be talking specifically about Azure Application Insights, right? So can you tell us more about what that is? Yeah, Application Insights is uh, application monitoring uh, features within Azure that allow you to collect data about your application while it's running. And the Profiler um, is, a, is an advanced feature of Application Insights to let you collect performance data about your application while it's running in production. Um, as you know, it, it, with, with apps running in the cloud, it can be really hard to get debugging data about those applications. Um, you can't just put a debugger on them. You can't just run a profiler on them whenever you want, unless you're using our service, which we run the profiler for you and collect that data uh, and, and upload it to our service and make it available for you through Application Insights. Cool. So uh, that's really interesting, Pro um, just the whole space of profiling. I feel like that's a subject that a lot of people are aware of, but don't quite use or learn up on until it's like imperative. So something's going wrong while the app's already out in yes. uh, production, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very true. It, it, a lot of times users are like, oh, I have a performance issue. What how, What do I do? How do I look into this? I, you know, it happened yesterday. How, how do I find out why and, and, and what I can do to fix it? And that's the cool thing about our profilers. You can turn it on today and just let it run. And it'll be collecting data in the background and it'll have that data ready for you when you have a problem that you want to investigate. And, and it does so in a way um, that's not intrusive to your app. It doesn't change your app code at all. It runs out of proc. It's collecting, um, uh, for, for Windows services, it's collecting ETW traces, which is a, a Windows eventing, and getting um, call stacks from, the, from that data. And so it, it, and it only runs, um, by default, it runs a couple minutes an hour. So it's not running all the time. It's, it's a sampling profiler. So we're hoping that over a period of time, it'll collect the relevant data that you need to debug your application. That's cool. And I like that you can kind of leave it on in the background and go about yeah. the rest of your yeah. dev work that yeah. you need to do. That's yeah, sweet. so wh why don't I show you how to enable it and, and start collecting this data? Yeah, sounds good. So this is a, an application that we have that demonstrates the profiler. It's an, it's an Azure app service, which is the easiest way to use uh, the profiler. It's, we have a real simple switch to turn it on and off, which I'll show here in a minute. Um, but for this, for this app service, you can go to the Application Insights tab. And if you have Application Insights enabled for your app, it'll look like this. It's, it shows Application Insights is turned on. And if it's not enabled, you can, you can enable it here. Um, but then you'll see this profiler section um, and you can turn the profiler on and off. Um, and as you can see for this app, we have the profiler on. So when the profiler's on, like I said, it's collecting data, you know, a little bit every hour. And the hope is that over a period of time, you'll get all kinds of, you know, requests will be coming into your application during those couple minutes an hour. And you'll hopefully get some long running requests and you can see, you know, what's happening, why those are taking a long time. So once you've got it on, you can you can go to your App Insights resource by clicking the View uh, Data at the top, and this takes you to the app, the actual Application Insights resource. I'm in a different resource now than before. I've gone from my app service to App Insights, mm -hmm. and the the profiler is part of the performance features of App Insights. And so this is the performance blade for Application Insights, and there's a lot of information on this blade that I'll get to in a little bit. But the first thing you can do is hit the profiler button at the top, which this is our kind of configuration page or um, kind of profiler home page. This, this allows you to set some different properties about the profiler. We have triggers, um, which I'll show you here. And, um, and this is a list of profiling sessions that have happened. Um, this app's been running for a long time and been collecting traces, profi uh, profiling traces, you know, 
every day for a long time and, and it lists those here. Um, but at the top is some uh, information about the profiler or settings about the profiler that you can set. The first one is profile now. If I click that button, it will start profiling right now in my service. Um, this is really cool if you're doing some testing, you might have a perf test or a stress test that you're running and you wanna get a profile from that test, you can click that button and it'll start profiling now. Um, and then there's triggers that you can set. Uh, if CPU goes above a certain threshold on the, the machines that are running your service, it'll trigger the profiler to start. And we have that at, by default set at 80% mm -hmm. and it'll run for 120 seconds. That's really cool. So you don't even have to play the trial and error game of trying to figure out where no. the spikes are. No, going. yeah, you don't, you don't have, it'll, it'll start for you when the, when CPU gets to a certain point. Um, and we also have a similar thing with memory. If your memory threshold gets above a certain point, we'll, we'll start the profiler. Um, and like, and again, that's set at 80% as the default. And then there's a, this setting here, this, this isn't released yet. I'm, I'm showing you um, kind of testing bits here. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, the profiler runs by default, like a, a couple minutes an hour. And up until now, we haven't had a way to, to change to, to, to um, change that setting. It's just, that's the way it is and that's what you get. We've had a lot of people ask us, can I turn that off? I only want to have the other triggers or I only want to have profile now. So, so we've given you ability to turn default profiling on and off. And then you can also set it normal, high or max. Um, instead of running two minutes an hour, you might want to run it more than that. So that's kind of high or max is like, run it as much as you can possibly run it. I wouldn't recommend doing that in a production service for very long because you could start affecting the performance of your app because we're collecting some very low level data and that it could, and then uploading that data, it could um, take up resources that your app would need to run. So sure. yeah, I would, I recommend keeping it on normal, but there are cases where you might, you might want to increase it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then this shows you, recent profiling sessions that we've done. And, and on, this, on the left here, you can see, it tells you how the, those, those uh, sessions were triggered. Uh, most of these are default sampling, which is that random, we're just gonna profile and hope we catch something cool. And, <laughs> and then we have a few here that are C triggered by the CPU trigger. That's so helpful. <laughs> just filter yeah. them out by problem. <laughs> Yep, yep, and and it's it's nice too because you know the dates here. If you knew you had a problem at a certain point in time, you can come in here and look. Okay, you know, on Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning, we had a high CPU. Let me let me click on that and see. I don't want to click on this right now because it takes a bit of time to load. But if you do click on that, it loads all the all the events that happened during that profiling session and lets you look at traces for that session. Which I'll show you that in a minute in a slightly different way. Cool. Um, so, so that's kind of the profiler homepage. Now let's go back to the performance blade. This is, this is the page that people are gonna to use to investigate performance problems. Um, by default on this page, it shows you the average length of time for, um, for a request. But I would recommend if you're looking into a problem, you wanna switch this to the 99th um, percentile. Now this is showing you the longest requests. Um, and, and this chart down here shows you all the requests that your application serve, serves and um, how long those requests took for the 99th um, percentile. So you can see we have some requests here. Um, now this is a contrived example. We've done this on purpose to make it um, have long running requests. But mm -hmm. you can see this, this one here takes 23 seconds. Um, <laughs> that's a long time. So that's that's quite a long time for requests. Yeah, it's like you, you want to look into that. What, why is that taking so long? And this chart over here is um, now not very interesting for this service because all of my requests, because it's an example, take this kind of the same amount of time. But this is a histogram that'll show you how many requests, or for each time slot, how many requests you had in that time slot. Um, and then the little triangles at the top indicate for that time slice or that that time slot, you have a profile. So yeah, I can drill into that if I want and see, okay, I have profiles or requests that take 20 seconds. I request that take 22 seconds. And on a production service, hopefully you have a broader range of times. It, it's, it, it looks kind of cool um, to see all the different time slots that your requests are taking. Um, but once you drill into this, 
um, you can click down here to this profiler traces button. And this, you can see it says 41. It means that for, for the filters that I have on this page, we have 41 examples of a, of a request that took that amount of time that we can show you detailed data about. So I'll click that and this will load the list of requests on the left and you could probably count them. These should be close to 41 or if not exactly on 41. And then this, this is the detailed data that we have about that request. And you should be able to see your code in here. This is a call stack of what happened during that request and what took the most time. We try to highlight the hot path for you, which is the pieces of that request that took the most CPU time. And for this one, you can see we're doing an array sort and, um, and that sort is taking a long time. There's, there's CPU time scattered throughout here and there's waiting time scattered. So, so it's the waiting time is because, because this is taking so long for the sort that this thread's getting um, swapped off the CPU and back on because the CPU can't allow one thread to just take over. So um, it keeps sending it off the CPU. They, okay, I'll get back to you in a minute, coming back on. That's what the waiting is. So you'd probably want to look into why is my sort taking so long? Am I doing it some weird way? Am I sorting too much data? You know, there might be something you could do to speed that up. Mm -hmm. So um, I noticed, like, for instance, I noticed the download trace button and in Visual Studio, there's also that built in profiler. So could you theoretically download this trace, upload it into VS, and then uh, track down like what line of code is causing that giant um, performance yes. spike? Yes, you yes, you can. Very good question. That That's exactly what you can do. And the really cool thing about the download trace button is it gives you that whole two minute trace. This, the, the view we have here um, is only the, what happened during your specific request that you're looking at. But this download trace button downloads the whole two minute ETW file. Um, which you can open in many different tools um, like Perfview, Windows Performance Analyzer, or Visual Studio. Um, I can show what that looks like in Visual Studio. Um, this is one I've opened in, in Visual Studio. And one thing to note about that when you download that file, it downloads it as a zip file. Visual mm -hmm. Studio doesn't recognize a zip file. You have to rename the file to end in .diag session, D-I-A-G-S-E-S-S-I-O-N. If that's the file extension, Visual Studio can open it. Gotcha. But um, Perfview and Windows Performance Analyzer can open the zip files. Sweet. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So and then you can use the Visual Studio, you know, diag session tools to dig into this and and see you know what's happening with with that um, with your code at that point. Yeah, so that's awesome that you can work together harmoniously if you want to. Yeah, yeah, and the really cool part about it is it's you, you're getting this from pro a production service. You didn't have to do anything to collect this data. We've collected it for yeah. you. Hopefully, it has interesting things in it, and you can you can find something, you know, to fix in your app. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and let me just show you a view of Windows Performance Analyzer because it has amazing analysis that you can do. This is from a a diag session that I collected um, from one of our actual production um, services. And you can see just the charts and graphs are just, you know, unbelievable data that you can get from this. Yeah. It, it takes a little, it takes a little bit of time to figure out what all it's telling you, but. <laughs> yep, I'm um, a little overwhelmed. <laughs> first yeah. Answer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it has really nice, um, you know, documentation and, and uh, I know users that have got some really valuable uh, information from this tool. So it, it works cool. very well. It's yeah. just nice that users have options either way. Yeah, yeah, and, and this being a Visual Studio show, we, we hope you use Visual Studio, but there's <laughs> other tools too. <laughs> Sweet. So I, if I wanted to go learn more, since I'm very much new to the profiling space, especially with um, application insights, where can I go to mm -hmm. learn more? Yeah, you can go to our help page, which is here. Um, we have we have you know pretty extensive documentation. We're always looking to improve it, so leave us a comment if you have questions, and we can we can uh, edit this documentation anytime. But this this tells you um, you know how to enable it for different types of services, and then some um, other options that you have, and then there's some troubleshooting at the bottom if you have if you have problems. Great, yeah, it seems like that's a lot of good stuff to get started with. Yeah, and we hope so. Sweet and. I mean, what's next for the profiler? Well, that thanks for asking. Um, we are looking at expanding what we show. Like um, in in the uh, browser, we have 
this view of uh, just one request, but we, we'd like to be able to show, um, and, and we've recently added this flame graph. I can't remember if I showed that earlier, but um, we wanna be able to show you uh, information from the whole trace file. This, this is a very request oriented view and we've gotten a lot of feedback from users that they'd like to see, you know, without downloading the trace, can I see information about the whole trace? And so that's what we're looking at doing now is, is allowing you to see maybe a flame graph for the entire ETW session. Um, and some some more we, we want to give you some more insights too as to where things might be slowing down and why. And so we're working on some um, some detection of patterns that we see in people's code and we can kind of we can give you hints about what what might be slowing your code down. Cool. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see that stuff. Yeah, we'll have to come back and do another show when we have some of that ready. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, thanks for coming now. Um, I, I think that's You're some welcome. really cool info that I'm sure tons of people would find incredibly useful whenever they run into those performance issues. So yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Great. And then, and there's at the top here, there's the, the help and send feedback. You, if you use these links, it'll contact our team also. So if you, if you need help with things, we're, we're there ready to help people. Awesome. Yeah. We, we actually do pay attention to the feedback. <laughs> that people yeah. send. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. And with that, yeah, once again, thank you so much. And hope everyone goes and tries out the cool profiling tools that we just talked about. And with that, happy coding.